Hey everyone, welcome to Way Too Late TV and the start of Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. Our trek through the MSQ main scenario quest line. I'm Sam, your host, and uh, today it is uh, slightly after 1 a.m., 1.02 a.m., and uh, I'm about to embark on the journey. So come along with me. Um, Got myself a new little hard drive, uh, five terabyte for all the footage, and um, I'm ready. Hope you bought stock in Puffs Plus because uh, there's going to be there's going to be some emotion. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. So uh, let's get started, huh? Let's uh, let's go over to the big board. Way too late TV. Right here on way too late tv yeah you like that all right let's actually go to the um main screen here so let's do that with the background music Okay, we're going in on Kaylee Blacksworn, my main. Players in queue, 1,986. I'm not surprised. And through the magic of uh, editing, we'll be back in a second. I'm in. All right, we are switching over to Machinist. Carrying all my gear. I am Sans Belt. Final Fantasy fourteen and Walker. And uh, one thing about Kaylee is she is level 80 everything except now Reaper, Sage, and Blue Mage. Okay. The next ship to sail. It's in Mordona. Here we go. Alpha node. Alpha node is feeling the need to take stock. Haley, do you have some time to talk? I'd like to gather everyone in Dawn's respite and together assess the situation in which we find ourselves. There we go. Let us take stock of the facts, shall we? The crisis at hand began with the sudden appearance of ominous towers in a multitude of locations throughout the world. We've since learned that said structures were brought into being by an organization known as the Telophoroi. The Telophoroi's stated purpose is to recreate the final days of Eon's past, an apocalyptic event that would result in the destruction of all we hold dear. Already these towers of theirs have been the cause of untold suffering. Countless innocents kidnapped and imprisoned, their faith perverted for primal summonings, And unless we find a way to deal with the corruptive aura surrounding the spires, we can't even get close enough to rescue anyone. Those shielded with the blessing of light seem able to resist being tempered, at least. 
But after what happened to Arnvald in Fort Dola, we need to be very, very careful about how we proceed. Yeah, while these threats close to home are of paramount concern, we mustn't lose sight of the situation in Garlemald. As you know, the Telophoroi are under the leadership of Van Daniel and one other delightful fellow, Zenos A. Galvis, the Crown Prince and our dear friend. To date, he's reclaimed his old body, murdered Emperor Varus, and plunged Garlemald into an even deeper pit of chaos. The capital has probably seen the worst of it. For a good while there, it saw the bloodiest fighting in the War of Secession, but that has since changed, and in troubling ways. I, during our reconnaissance, the air was not once rent by the barking of cannons or the cries of discord. It was an eerie fog of silence which did blanket that ruined city. The inhabitants appeared to have been tempered, with nary a word spoken did they labor to transform the palace into a soaring edifice born of nightmares. If they were indeed made thralls, it seems safe to assume that these events, too, were orchestrated by the Telophoroi. An army of primals is awful enough, but in light of recent developments, I fear it is only the prelude to an even greater catastrophe. We all need to devise a means to counter this threat, and quickly, before our allies are overwhelmed. We will find a way in Charlay, and I'm sure of it. Master Fortunault's comments regarding the final days were curious, to say the least. The forum knows more than it's letting on. Sorry to interrupt. We've just received word from Mistress Kryle. She says that arrangements for your visit have been finalized. You're to head to Limsalo Minsa and board the next ship bound for Charleyan. And on arrival, present yourselves as associates of the students of Valdesian, come to assist with the Order's restoration. Hmm. The arrangements may be settled, but what of your thoughts? They must race at the prospect of returning home after so long. I'm eager to see it, of course. Of course, uh, we should set off at once. Then I'll accompany you to the docks. You need at least one person there to wave and cry and wish you a safe journey. There's the new quest accepted music. Da -da 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 -da. Let's head to Limsa. This place is gonna be wild. Alright. Where are we headed? This away. Actually, I'm going to head to the Arkness Guild. Uh, Arkness Guild. Arkness Guild, maybe? Uh, yeah, Arkness Guild. Oh, this is going to be, oh my god. Okay, here we go. Where are they? There we go, Tataru. Everyone's here, which is good, because I've already paid for your passage and the fee is non-refundable. The ship for Charlie and should be pulling into port soon, so please follow me and have all your luggage close at hand.
We've almost finished loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on schedule. Or so I'm told. Excellent. It is nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. It is upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louis Soir of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? <laughs> That's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlian, Sir Estinian? Sir Estinian? <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh... Merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. Or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. <laughs> You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. Better. Are you all right, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just... We're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell-bent on destroying the world. And, once again, I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. I'll bring them back safe and sound, I promise. I'll hold you to that. I know you will. Oh, good. You're still here. Hori! Coltine! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation, so we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey and promise that they'll look after things here until you return. We will too, of course. Aye, we, your fellow scions of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. Good, good. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian! It's time. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful.
And so you venture forth unto the unknown. Emmett Selk. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. And there, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. Hmm. Okay. Answers. Answers. Why, why is answers playing? Dawned, my fellow early riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. I don't know if I like this. It's the Lady of Light. My voice yet reaches you. I am glad. Hear. Feel. Think and thus do we meet face to face at last, my warrior of light guided by the crystal. Why now, Heidelin? I can trust your words no longer. Why now, Heidelin? After your sojourn and fast, I believe you have your answer. You have 
gained an understanding of what I truly am, what Eidolon has always been, a primal. Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world, and I was brought forth to bind him. who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. Oh, just the music. greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Oh. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Wheels shudder and turn. Mask. Conflict looms. Monumental. Which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, That was something. Oh, what a fine morning. Oh, oh, still a bit stiff, though. And a good morning to you, too. Taking a look at the island already? Then let's go. Let's go. Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. have arisen <sighs> there she is <laughs> good old Charlian. oh I see it Father's eyes, but we'll manage on our own if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? Indeed, it is as Sir Estinian saith Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side. I pray. my friends we are ever grateful for your steadfast support upon arrival 
we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. Okay. Charlian, the solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boot set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. Hasn't Charlie and Orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. It's true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Mm -hmm. Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Grahatia. It might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? Of course. The immigration offices were this way, as I recall. Shall we? We shall. Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Grahat here of the students of Baldessian at your service. 
I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Very good. I have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Ishtola rule. citizen registry kept in the main repository. Hmm. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. Now, who do we have here? And Alizé Leveilleur. Your applications have also been approved. Having said that... The streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's lord disowned his young progeny. Ah. That's... A problem. We're aware. And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. We shall keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Hmm. Name and occupation? Blacksworn adventurer by trade, Kaylee Blacksworn artisan, Kaylee Blacksworn champion of Eorzea. I'm an artisan. Indeed. Your profile describes you as an adventurer, but one also trained in the rather more constructive pursuits of procurement and production. You may enter. And you, sir? Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formerly, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. 
Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. Hello, Kryl. Kryl, it is good to see you. Likewise, long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. <laughs> well, I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. Oh, Lord. You know he wants a generous salary. Okay. Ah. an ethernet shard over here oh my god we are we're going at 26 fps because there's that many people here scholars harbor there's the giant ethernet right there the aether crystal there's cryo I'm glad I spotted your ship coming into port. The officers are born bureaucrats and sticklers for detail. In any case, you may relax and take a moment to get your land legs back. Alright. Horse chestnut weapon coffer. I level 515. I have better than that. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful. Mission complete. Use it. Kryle sweeps the scions with a speculative look. Old Charlayan, new to you. I had thought to launch directly into an explanation of what I had learned and how we might proceed. But this is Kaylee and Estinian's first time in Sheldon, and for the rest of you, a homecoming that was long overdue. You must have places you wish to visit and people you're dying to see. Therefore, I propose we postpone our agenda so that you may all have sufficient time to recover from your journey and get your bearings in the city. Once you settle in, we can reconvene at the Beldesian Annex. How does that sound? is a fine suggestion. We may not be welcome at the Lavalier estate as such, but I should like to nose around the neighborhood all the same. I am equally untethered, as it were. There is no particular place that my kin call home. Still, I would not pass up the opportunity to reacquaint myself with the city. Likewise, a quick tour of our old haunts might even yield some useful gossip. The annex was west of the Aetherite planet. 
Plaza, wasn't it? I shall join you there anon. Yes, we'll see you there. I too have places I would be remiss in not visiting forthwith, by thy leave. What of you, Estinian? My services as a guide are yours for the asking. That won't be necessary. Until we reconvene, I prefer to wander as the wind takes me. I mean, he's a Stinian. Of course he's going to wander. But, but I could... Oh. Well, Raha, would you like to join us then? You've been gone for quite a while, and this would be the perfect way to refresh those dusty old memories of yours. Oh, of, of course, if you will have me. Come, Kaylee. Shaw lay in awaits. I think I skipped something there. Yay. Dr. Graha. After you, my friend, I am more than content to follow your lead. Rahati is now accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave Grahatia behind by entering a different area, using the Aethernet, or putting too much distance between you. You can also speak with Graha, and then select the option to part ways. If you wish to have Graha accompany you again, return and speak with him at the original location. While Graha is accompanying you, try speaking with Kryle. All set, then let us be on our way. Our first stop, amusingly enough, will be the last stand. It's the cafe on the west side of the harbor. Kral is also now accompanying you. Lead your two companions to the last stand and speak with Kral at the designated location. While you are accompanied, you may encounter conversation points along the way which offer additional topics of discussion. Okay. Enter the glowing area and speak with your quest companions to initiate these bonus conversations. Enjoy exploring your surroundings together. Oh yeah, they're keeping up just fine. statue in the armor. The path leading out toward the sea is known as the Thaliac Stoa, so named for the statue of the scholar which stands at its end. As you know, the Charlayan people prize the accumulation of wisdom above all else. Thus, when Thaliac was chosen as our patron deity, it was more a matter of pragmatism than belief. An alignment of principles, as it were. We may have honored him with a rather impressive sculpture, yes, but our faith is not so restrictive as that of, say, the Ishgardians. Individual Charleans can, and do, worship the divinities of their choosing. Okay, and Graha. Now that is a sight one could hardly forget, the great statue of Thaliac. As a student at Baldesian, I was usually quartered on the Isle of Val, but I would gaze upon the scholar's wise features every time I returned by ship to the city.
Right there. Oops. Right here. Well, and here we are, the last stand. I may have mentioned this before, but although our research into nutrition and food preparation is quite extensive, the average Charlie intends to regard seasoning and flavor with a certain indifference. How can I put this? The food is, um, it's bland. As encapsulated by our infamous Archon Loaf, the prevailing sentiment toward cuisine is dietary value first and taste a distant second. There was one pupil at the stadium, however, who could stomach the school's insipid meals no longer, so he quit his lessons and poured all his savings into building a proper eatery. And so the last stand came to be. It is, as the name implies, the sole dedicated outpost of fine dining in Charlotte. The one and only bastion of the culinary arts is an isle of otherwise mediocre fare. In an isle of otherwise mediocre fare. I seem to recall that their burger being hailed as one of the more impressive items on the menu. Not that I ever had the pleasure of eating one myself. Because you were a typical Charlene when it came to cheap and convenient, Raha. But surely Tataru's taught you how to appreciate a well-prepared dish. We should all stop in when time permits and sample the cafe's delights. Shall we press on? The stairs to the side of the cafe will take us up to the Aetherite Plaza. Okay. Right there. God, this is gorgeous. Going at a uh, melee 25 FPS. Just because there's so damn many people here. Going to attune to the Aetherite. May as well set this as a favorite, no, free destination. Mysterium can go suck a lemon. All right, Kryl. An unusual shape, isn't it? I assure you, however, that it's perfectly functioning Aetherite. Remember to attune yourself before we move on. Now, being the diligent tour guide that I am, I should make mention of the Confluence, a research facility located on this very plaza. Its much vaunted discoveries are the reason Charlene stands at the forefront of teleportation technology. In deciphering an, the underlying principles of Allegan Aetherites, it allowed us to understand and reconstruct what was essentially a lost art. And off we go to our next destination. Our path leads northeast to the Agora, Charlene's largest marketplace. Okay, so we are headed uh, northeast. There's a summoning bell, there's the Watcher. We are indeed in a marketplace. Okay. Trial has talks. Welcome to the Agora, where you can find wares made in Charlian, as well as a wide selection of imported goods. They also used to sell questionable prototypes from the various research institutes, but I think that practice has thankfully died out, for the most part. Otherwise, I can think of no better place to stock up for your next big adventure. Am I overselling it? <clears throat> on a more serious note, the next stop on our tour is one which has particular relevance to our ultimate purpose here. We must head back to the Aetherite Plaza, follow the path north, then climb the stairs up to that imposing building at the very top. Okay, so Aetherite Plaza is uh, southwest. Follow the path north, then climb the stairs up. Alright, um... 
Um, is there an Aetherite here? Or an... Okay, um... Lavalier Estate, Journey's End. Okay, Valdezian Annex. I am really... slacking on those. Okay. Either way. Down here, head north. Conversation spot. Discuss the water features. This is the Nymphaeum, an area de dedicated to the blessings of water. For Charleans, water represents more than a life sustaining liquid. It is a reminder of the great flood which precipitated the birth of our nation, as well as a symbol of the knowledge which flows from Thalaic's divine ear. This is the reason you see an abundance of fountains throughout the city and a propensity for utilizing water as a decorative feature in our architecture. Braha? These little decorative features are typical of Chalet architecture. Aside from the research wing, our headquarters on the Isle of Val were rather simple and rustic by comparison. Gotcha. All right, where are we headed? Oh, we gotta go up. Uppity bup bup. There it is. Rowell's got it. This grand structure before you is the Rostra. The name refers to the original public platform erected here, upon which a forum of elected representatives would deliver orations and debate policy. Although the stage has since evolved into council chambers, the nature of the forum and duties of its members remain largely unchanged. Am I boring you, Raha? You seem awfully distracted. My apologies, from here one can see the entire city spread out below. The vista put me in mind of my arrival in the first. Those who had gathered at the Crystal Tower asked me how they might go about building a new home. Naturally, my answers were inspired by my knowledge of the finest settlement I could think of, the great city of Charlotte. And bit by bit, those few buildings grew into a town, a community, the Crystarium. I can almost see its echo. I see. Feel free to come up here whenever you wish. I don't think the counselors would object to you simply enjoying the view. Such memories should be treasured. For now, however, the tour must go on. A spectacle of sightseeing concludes with the fittingly named Journey's End. Walk down the stairs to the east and continue straight ahead. All right. Oh, wow. Can I get that, uh... Right there. All right, headed down this way. Still got Kryle and uh, Graha with me, which is good.
right here is the spot. Trial. We've arrived at journey's end. History tells us that this was where those who put us ashore with Archon Youngcrip built their first home. In the present day, it serves as the residential district for the most important officials and the oldest Charlene families. You'll see that one mansion is clearly larger than its neighbors. The estate belongs to our friends from House Levelier. All things considered, we should probably keep our distance for the time being. And with that, we bring our little Charlene tour to a close. I hope that it's proven to be an entertaining and enlightening experience. Now, shall we head directly to the Baldizian Annex? You remember the way, don't you, Raha? Let me think. We head down toward the harbor, cross the bridge to our right, then follow the path below the Aetherite Blaster? Correct! After you, Kaylee. Alright, I'm going to attune to the uh, Aetherite Crystal. Or Aethernut Shard, sorry. Is there another one down here? Yes, there is. Okay, I'm going to go to that one. to journeys and I still have them I do all right Raha journeys and right we cross this bridge here as I recall stick to the path and be careful not to end up back in the Aetherite Plaza journeys in. Okay, Charlene is full of educational and research institutions, but there are still professors who prefer to establish their own private practices. Not that I ever attended the exclusive schools they run in those residences. Perhaps the twins could tell you more about them. Okay, so cross this bridge. here? No. Don't end up in the Aetherite Plaza. Okay. Go down here. As the joyous look on Raha's face has undoubtedly informed you, this is the Baldesian Annex. If you continue up the hill, you'll arrive on the doorstep of Phenomenal, but I think we've explored enough for one day. We can take you there another time. Inside with you, then. Alright. Oh, my leg. I'm back, and I brought Kaylee and Raha with me. Ah, you were right about the ship. Then, hello, Graha, it's nice to see you again. 
And it's a pleasure to finally meet you, Kaylee. I've heard many a tale of your exploits. Ojika? Ojika Stunjika. It's been an age. Allow me to introduce Ojika Sunjika, an administration officer for the students of Baldesian. He oversees the day-to-day -day business of, of the Annex. You may recall meeting his cousin, cousin Ijika. Oh yes, Eureka, I've read the initial reports. Quite a shock to hear what's become of the Isle. Do take care if you have the opportunity to rejoin the expedition. This place is like a second home for the students. The Isle of Val served as our main headquarters, of course, but we often had occasion to visit Charlayan. What are the make use of the city's research facilities, attend conferences, or procure supplies from distant shores? And the annex here was built to provide lodgings for our members while we engaged in such activities. Ever since our former headquarters, along with the Isle itself, vanished, the Annex has served as our base of operations. And yet it feels so empty. With so many lost to us, our organization is a shell of its former self. The day will come when we see the students rise again. But first, we must ensure that the Tilaferoi fall. Through that door on the left there is the main hall, where we can discuss our options moving forward. Once everyone arrives, that is. You probably have time to rest before our discussions begin in earnest. I had private quarters prepared for you in the Andron, so please feel free to make yourself at home. Ah, the nap rooms. Perfect for an afternoon doze. Oh, I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. The chambers are quite well appointed. Far more than some cheap roadside inn, you may be assured. But simply that we were often so busy with research or exhausted from journeys abroad that we would slip into the and Andron just to steal a few wings. And thus he became known as amongst the students as nap rooms. Even many such naps might last well, well into the following morning. Say the word and I'll be happy to show you to your chamber. Hopefully the others won't be too long in coming. I'll wait for you all in the main hall. Gotta get my neck in shape for all the nodding. Let's see here. Welcome back, Kaylee. Ready for a nap? Uh, ask about the Andron. As Graha explained, the Andron's rooms were furnished for folk needing a break from all-night research or recently returned from expeditions. The students are used to seeing those walls plastered with articles and diagrams and personal messages, but I imagine it's quite a surprise for our newer guests. Why not take them down, you ask? Well, it's often the same people who stay in these chambers, after all. And besides, when I see old notes written by friends who've since passed, it's... Well, it's comforting in a way. As if they're still here with us. Oh, and just to be clear, these are properly appointed bedrooms. Any mention of naps is not meant to dissuade you from getting a full night's sleep. Okay, let's retire to our room. Clean sheets and warm blankets away. Rest as long as you like. Crystal Bell, that's the esthetician. Summoning Bell, that is the uh, thingy. Orchestrian, Comfy Feather Bed, Unending Journey, Glamour Dresser, Armoire. 
377 out of 400. Any new glamour plates? No. No. No new glamour plates. Speak with Kyle in the main hall. Honestly, though, I am starting to get tired, so I think I'm going to rest on the comfy feather bed. And log out for right now. That was a good session. I'm going to be doing this in just a second. Way too late TV. So I want to thank uh, you all for uh, joining me here on uh, Way Too Late TV for the initial session of Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker. Uh, we will be actually going uh, deeper into Endwalker um, with the next video. Um, I will actually be waking up in probably about four or five hours. Um, I don't actually sleep very long. It's It's a problem. But you know how it'd be. Um, but yeah, I'll be waking up in about four or five hours, probably uh, doing a little more recording, doing some editing, putting this one out, um, doing what I can. Um, and um, yeah, getting the, uh, getting the old train moving. So um, this one should be out uh, later on on the third. Um, the next one uh, later on on the fourth. Um, here we go. Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. It has begun. Thank you for joining here on Way Too Late TV. I'm Sam, your host. Uh, join me any day of the week, any time of the day at uh, waytoolatetv.com. Um, you can uh, find my Twitter, my YouTube, which you're on right now because all my stuff is YouTube only. A um, couple of the... Uh, Twitch feeds that I moderate, uh, including Next underscore Incendiary and uh, Faust TTV, um, and uh, playlists for pretty much all the uh, uh, stuff that I do, um, and uh, some other bits and bobs that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Um, all at waytoolatetv.com. Um, if you like this video, please consider hitting subscribe. Please uh, think about hitting that bell uh, so that you get uh, updates for all the videos when they go live. Um, and um, hit like if you like the video. It, it, it makes a world of difference for me, you know. So uh, thank you. I will see you next time. Good night, my night owls. Sleep well when you get there. Way too late to be.